Hello and welcome to another video guys. How's everybody doing? Uh, strangest thing today, I saw a guy sucking on a pipe, like a drainage pipe coming out of a business. Like, like a little hamster just... I, I don't know who needs to hear this and I'm not trying to disparage the homeless, but guys, you can literally go to McDonald's and get free water like at any point in time. They even have Wi-Fi. You can get you a job too. Holy shit. All of that aside, the topic for today's video is going to be the mindset to progress and excel as a motorcyclist. And that mindset is being a product of practice. Now, everybody knows somebody who's like super talented. You know, you go with the guy the first time he's ever played pickleball and he's just a madman, okay? That's very possible. You know, some people are talented and they just pick something up innately, but you didn't see the years of preparation he put, you know, playing baseball, getting that hand-eye coordination with sports, things like that. Um, and we often overlook these factors when we assign people as just, that guy's talented. Uh, another thing uh, when it comes to being talented in particular is often people who are talented, like innately gifted in a task, can be super lazy, right? If you never had to work to get five or six out of 10 at some task, you often don't know what it takes to get 10 out of 10, and they never do. You know, what a fucking moron. Uh, and, and these people often never get 10 out of 10. You know, uh, Olympians are not born, they're built. It takes years and years of practice. And that's what I want to instill in riders, and that's something that I use on almost any venture that I take upon myself. It's understanding that talent doesn't matter. You could just go on believing that talent doesn't outright exist. Um, what matters is the time that we put into the, you know, the effort, the practice that we put into any venture. Um, something I say all the time is that I'm a product of practice. What I mean by that is I will make every single mistake, but I try to learn from all of those mistakes. And that has really served me positively. You'll notice over years, if you can just correct your small mistakes, not let them stack up, improve, you're going to pass those talented individuals. You just will uh, because they're not improving. They're overlooking their mistakes. They're staying at a small pool of friends. Maybe they're pretty good at a video game, but they just play with their friends and just beat the hell out of worse players. They're not truly getting any better. And if you set aside time to practice, and to consistently improve, you will get better and you will pass these talented people. Talented. 10 minutes a day, a couple of days out the month. It doesn't take a lot if you are dedicating time for practice. Um, and there's no limit to how much you can practice. And what you wanna do in this time is identify flaws that you have within your riding ability and spend time in that flaw. Spend time in that discomfort. You know, it's not comfortable. Maybe you're good at left turns, really good. You're getting to the edge of your tire, your chicken strips are gone, but your right turns suck. And so you just, you, you, what are you gonna do? You're just gonna let that go? Like, oh, I'm just, I'm just not good at right turns, bullshit. Um, you can, it's just, you haven't spent as much time. You're not as comfortable there and it, it takes a little bit more effort. Um, and that's all you really have to do. Um, identify that flaw say, you know what, today, this afternoon, I'm going to practice right turns in particular. Whereas, you know, you were always able to push left turns, but you never really push right turns because you know you're worse at them. Fuck that. Forget that. Be the product of practice. Know that you are as good, you will be as good as the practice that you put in. Setting aside that time, building those new pathways in the brain, uh, becoming accustomed to that new movement, learning to do it better, uh, these are going to make you progress and progress way faster than you otherwise would have. Sure, riding at all is going to improve you, your riding. It's fucking sprinkling. You're only as good as the weakest link, right? That's something we've all heard. That's a trope that people say. Um, but that holds true for riding as well. I don't know if you guys are going to... I've never been in a rainstorm with this damn camera. I hope it's not screwing up everything. Uh, you're only as good as the weakest link uh, in the chain. And that's very true. You know, if you're not good at braking, your overall speed, what you're able to do, 
uh, you know, your cornering speed, your apex speed, your straight line speed, it's all gonna suffer and hinge on the fact that you're just not very good at braking. People who brake faster are able to extend straightaways and therefore carry more speed overall. Yeah, so you're only as good as your weakest link. And so if you want to improve, the easiest way to get the most gains with the shortest amount of time is to identify your biggest flaws and work on those. Uh, that's gonna make your average riding skill raise overall. But yeah, just spending that time, again, Jesus, what a fucking moron. Spending that time that other people are not gonna spend, you know, taking that effort, living in that thing that is discomforting to you, this is gonna improve you overall. You know, this is the thing where you go ride with a friend after two months and you are so much faster and they comment like, dude, you're so much faster now because he's just riding for fun. Maybe he's going all out straight on a highway, you know, learning absolutely nothing, totally wasting his time. And just setting aside that time, that dedicated practice is really going to improve you. It's so effective because you're essentially coaching yourself. Now, on any pursuit, you can always hire a coach. Uh, but outside of like professional racers or kids who are, you know, boot camping to one day be a professional racer, not many people have a dedicated motorcycling coach. But that's fine. You can generally, you can generally tell like where you need work by how uncomfortable you feel. Uh, like right now, I don't know the limits of my tires because they're wet. I don't feel comfortable. So something I should spend time on is learning the wet limits of my tires. Just that's the point I want to make. Just by how that corner felt to me, that tells me I could use some work in that area. Uh, and you can do that with any facet of your riding ability. Another thing when it comes to coaching is, you know, with today, the way we have like GoPros, phones, we have all these um, advanced cameras everywhere in our life. You know, you can film yourself. Uh, what do football players and football teams do after the big game? They watch it back. OK, that's important. Uh, when I play drums, I'd film myself a lot not to listen to myself as much as to watch myself because, you know, motorcycling, like a lot of athletic pursuits, you know, you have to be present in a certain way. And it's not always, you're not always able to do all of the things that you have to do while critiquing yourself in real time. So it's just helpful to maybe have a GoPro or some kind of, you know, 3D cam set up to go back and watch your ride, watch important parts, watch maybe where you didn't do so well, or maybe you did do well, and maybe I don't need to practice that anymore. Things like that. And, and also just to keep an accurate timeline of your progress over time. That can be some of the most rewarding time is when you look back on old things like, oh God, I can't believe I used to do that. It's like, yeah, the time and practice that you've put in has paid off and it's a really great feeling. And, and right now we're talking about motorcycling, but this state of mind being a product of practice, setting aside practice time, working on something, this can be applied to anything. Um, you know, once you're good and proficient at a certain task, the thought process, the steps and process it took you to get there, to get that good can be applied literally to anything, any other pursuit. So being really good at anything can help you be really good at anything else. Uh, however, there is some detrimental uh, side of it and it's, you know, after you're really good at one thing, but it can feel actually really bad to venture out into a new area, right? Maybe you're really good at grip racing, but you know, you never really practice at drifting and, you know, you spend a couple minutes trying and you're like, this isn't for me. It's uncomfortable to spend time learning it from scratch when you're good at something else, but that's okay because you're gonna make such big strides. You know, maybe if you spent, if you're really good at something and you spend a hundred hours, um, you're gonna make a very small gain. But if you spend two hours practicing something you're completely new at, you're gonna make huge improvements in your ability. And so it could just be a fun change of pace uh, to do that, to uh, try something new, step out of your comfort zone. But in general, you know, this practice is never wasted time and being able to coach yourself is never wasted. It, it will come in handy in every pursuit, uh, music, uh, careers, starting a business, everything. It's, it's the same process. So yes, maybe you love motorcycling right now and you're working really hard to get really good at it but you don't have to feel like you're wasting your time. If you're learning to coach yourself, if you're learning to improve, you can use that in the future at any other, any number of topics or any number of pursuits you choose uh, hobbies in the future. So anyway, guys, a little bit shorter of a video, 
Uh, something I want to try in the future is maybe trying shorter topic videos. Um, if every video isn't necessarily 20 minutes, uh, I might be able to start making multiple videos a week. Uh, so that's just something I'm thinking about, something I'm uh, toying around with. So anyway, guys, that's the video. I really appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Later, y'all.